Yeah, hey, uh, it's vlogging 418. Geez, you're scary. Well, it's a lovely day in Versailles where um, I need to get some food for the picnic. I got uh, some gouda with truffles, which is amazing. If you ever out here, uh, I mean, in France in general, you can find this, but if you ever see gouda with truffles, you have to try it. I am sure they make it in the Netherlands as well, but wherever you can find it, life changing. So I'm going to get that. I have that. Now I need to get baguette so that I can make a sandwich and that'll be a, that that will be a sufficient lunch for me absolutely and the other thing you can do i said this before but just in case you didn't know when you're in france you can always get half a baguette it's a demi baguette so half a baguette always costs 50 cents let's go to this place which is unfortunate because i have to go here today it costs like 53 cents or something which means you get a ridiculous amount of change back but can't win them all can't win them. And there you have it all right, so I've got bread, I've got cheese. It's definitely enough. Huh? One of the unforeseen problems today has been that they've stopped allowing us to bring wine in for no good reason. It's technically not allowed in the grounds, but we do it all the time. Uh, they normally let us, but the last couple of weeks they've stopped and there's no good reason for it. It's really frustrating, really frustrating. It's um, one of those things where there's just, it's just a couple of managers who are like, nope, we're not doing this anymore. So the people who normally let us in aren't allowed to because the guy who came today literally just came down for us. He came down, uh, stopped us from bringing wine in. As soon as we were through, he left. He was like, all right, done my job, I'm gone. Come on, you can, and it was really, the reason it's so frustrating, even though it's technically not allowed, is because you can buy alcohol on the grounds. So you come through, there's a guy here who sells it. So you can still get alcohol here, which is really, uh, it's really frustrating. So we'll get on, we'll get on with the day, but um, it's really disappointing because there are two people on my tour who didn't get to have their wine. They had to leave it outside, which we'll try to get it back for them later, but uh, it's, uh, it's been, uh, so annoying. <laughs> That's why we run, I say, the classic French overreach. The classic French overreach is effectively best described or defined as a French person exercising their authority for no other reason than they want to in the moment. Usually to obnoxious or ill effect to the one they're exercising it upon, in this case me. The, the harmless and fun example would be one time when I was on tour and we stopped in Saint-Germain-des-Prés uh, to talk about the arts. The little old lady stopped us. She walked right into the middle of my group and waggled her finger at me and said, Monsieur, this is too dangerous, you know, in French. It's so dangerous, so, you know, you, you're, not, you're, not, you're not doing this right. So what are you talking about? She said, the women, they're not safe. What she was complaining about was that the women's purses in their baskets were not secure and that they needed to wrap their purse straps around the handlebars. So, of course, I said, all right, I'll, I'll let them know. You know, I'll tell them to be safe. Thank you. And rather than just leaving it at that, she proceeded to assume the authority of an indignant old woman and walked over and um, actually wrapped the purse straps of each and every individual woman around her handlebars, saying, you know, there you go, safe. Harmless, fine, hilarious, a little bit annoying, but at the same time rather amusing. And that's kind of one of the more um, harmless versions of the classic French overreach. What I call the middle grade harmless version, but, or the less harmless version, but not the most harmful version is what happened today. So technically there is a rule written down on a tiny little sign somewhere hidden off in the bushes that says, you're not allowed to have alcohol on the grounds of Versailles. Technically, they had the right to stop us. But technically, it's also really obnoxious because the locals all bring wine in and we bring wine in every day and you can buy alcohol on the grounds. So. You can't have alcohol on the grounds, and yet there's an official sanctioned food vendor here that does sell it on the grounds. So they break their own rules every day. State sanctioned alcohol selling in a park that doesn't allow alcohol. So they're not allowing us to bring alcohol in, 
was purely just because they wanted to flex their authoritarian muscles for just a moment. That's at least the way you can take it. I did, we don't know why they're cracking down on it all of a sudden, but we went the whole summer without any problems and now all of a sudden they're deciding to actively stop us. So that is like the middle grade, pseudo harmful, but honestly just mostly annoying, classic French overreach. The more harmful version of a classic French overreach is something that happens like at the prefecture. Come on. C'est encore moi. Ah, c'est encore vous. Ah wow, encore. Vous euh, vous faites euh, de la de la course en ce moment. C'est l'exercice. Vous êtes super rapide en fait. Ils viennent d'où vos clients Ah, ils sont tous américains aujourd'hui en fait. That little interruption provided by what I like to call a classic French friendliness. The, one of the things the French don't get enough credit for is being friendly, and they really are. It's one of the reasons I love coming out to Versailles, because the people here are enormously friendly, and that guy, he's already lapped us once, and he wanted, he's like, that's me. It's, it's me again. How are you? Wanted to know about my clients, wanted to know where they were from. Welcome them to France. Very, very lovely. And I, that's one of the reasons I love living in France, because the people here are enormously friendly, except in instances where there's the classic French. Overreach. Back to that in a moment. All right, I'm off to wine that was taken earlier. I hid it in a shrub, so I'm gonna go see if it's still in the shrub or not, and then uh, get it back to them before they go into the chateau. That's the plan, at least. Hopefully, it's still there. All right, here we go. Will it still be here? All right, yes, there it is. Still here. Oh. Lucky. I saw someone looking at this when I came up, actually. And uh, it's like, oh yeah, there's mine. She's like, oh, okay. It's kind of weird that they're here, bye. <laughs> yes, goodbye. And that right there is what success tastes like. Overcoming slightly the French overreach, but not quite because Sadly, they didn't get their wine at lunch, although one of them did buy more wine. And one of the families did sneak the wine through. They hid it well, and they snuck it through, so that was good. Glad we got it back. So, the more insidious version, as I was on to before the Frenchman stopped to say hello, was when someone has genuine authority of your life, and they abuse it just for their own enjoyment, I suppose. So the prefecture is the perfect example. They have all the authority in the world to reject someone's visa application, you know, at the very end. They're effectively the rubber stamp at the end. So all they're there to do is make sure everything is there, everything's in order, and then they give you the rubber stamp and move you right along. That's all they're there for. But because they can withhold that stamp, they decide to mess with people, to make them jump through extra hoops, to create new hoops that were never there to begin with, just to exercise their authority and to let you know where you stand. And that is the most insidious form of French overreach that there is. And it is a part of the everyday life here. It's not just that, it's when you try to get a telephone line installed. I mean, you do so many different things. It can happen with the bureaucracy here. It's what it's famous for. Oh, I guess I see you somewhere Right, so that's a little bit about the classic French overreach. Ultimately, it's one of those things where you, you might say, well, that's, you know, people can be jerks in any situation. But one of the big differences between my home and here is that at home, there's a chain of command, right? So you sit down across from someone like some bureaucrat and they're giving you a hard time and you, you just turn around and you say, I want to speak with your manager or with your boss. You have recourse um, at home here. Whoever you're sitting in front of has all the authority. It's their job, it's what they do, and nobody's going to tell them how to do their job, unless you know the President of the Republic, but I imagine that even that isn't enough. So you really are in their grasp, and asking to see a manager is like asking for a fight. You know, it's not gonna make anything better, it's gonna make everything worse. So you really just have to subject yourself to it. Now on the funny side, on that light side with the little old lady, 
It was wrapping purse straps around everyone's handlebars. That is rather, you know, it's, it's cute. Uh, annoying, of course, because she's not doing it to be particularly nice. She's doing it to demonstrate she knows what's what and she's going to tell you exactly what to do about it. Um, but on the other side, when you're sitting in front of an immigration official who's saying basically, why should I let you stay in the country? If you do or say anything that I don't like, I will kick you out. Even though you've done literally everything we've asked you to do, you've uprooted your life, you're here, and you should get this stamp, I now have the ability to say, mm, I don't want to give it to you. Come back in three months with these things that nobody told you you would need because I feel like it. That is the classic French overreach in, in its full glory. Just to be able to say, I have this little bit of authority and I'm going to use it, even though I probably should not. So that today is a definition for you of the classic French overreach. Something that's a term that I made up as far as I know, but it's not an experience I made up. That experience is universal throughout France. So if you need to describe it at any point and you don't want to use really bad language, like say something like those French bastards, uh, then instead uh, you can say, that was a wonderful example of the classic French overreach. <laughs> I guess I see you somewhere around